Mr. Hendricks. Welcome to Creative Writing. Uh, this is our back to school tonight PowerPoint. So it's basically just me hoping to give you an overview as to the class and uh, make sure everybody's still on board, which I hope you are. Um, this is an ELA elective, uh, meaning while it is English focused, it is also an elective, so it does not count as your English class. You will need to also take a regular English class. Um, there is a mix of reasons that students have taken this class in the past. Um, sometimes students come in with very specific goals. We've had, uh, I've had, or I've had, uh, students who say, hey, um, I'm actually not interested in STEM all that much, but I do want to be a science fiction author. So I pushed for my parents to have pushed to bring me to TPAA so I could get the science, some science and STEM background to then write stories about. Um, a lot of times I just get students who are like, hey, um, sort of as a reflective practice to sort of think about my life, I like to write poems or short stories as sort of a way to get my ideas out, and I find it sort of soothing. Um, some students are just, hey, I like to write, and it seems better than, you know, taking an extra year of PE or whatever else. Um, so there's a wide variety. Um, I have also have had a few students who've taken it specifically because uh, near the end of the year we'll be talking a little bit about publishing and they wanted to know how to self-publish books. We've had a few students who did uh, uh, like family cookbooks and uh, short story poems and collections like that of work that they have written basically since elementary school. I just wanted to know how to publish that. So, uh, so we will be covering all of that. Uh, writing, we will do regular daily writing exercises, usually pretty short, just hey, here's a prompt. Uh, sort of brainstorm some ideas off of it. Um, we will do rewrites. Uh, yeah, probably still like every two weeks. Um, and we'll do rewrite rationales. So the idea there is you've got a short story or a poem, not necessarily real long, but just, hey, here's my original work. Then you rewrite it in some way. Maybe you go, hey, I didn't really like this scene. It didn't work for me. Maybe you go, hey, I want to change the point of view a little bit. Um, I have been following this one character through this haunted house, but maybe it would be, this scene would be better if I wrote it from the point of view of another character. Um, and so sort of rewrite a part of it. Maybe uh, on a poem, do some massive either structural changes or vocabulary changes. Uh, rewrite it and then re and then write a short paragraph on these are the changes I made and this is why. You know, um, I was writing a horror story and even though the main character survives the story, I wanted to do this one scene from a character that's going to die so people would be like more invested in them when they do. Uh, in November, we're going to do Nano Remo, which is an extended novel writing project. Um, yeah. This is going to be a little weird with the uh, online format. A lot of times, particularly in November when we're doing the novel writing thing, uh, historically, students have just come in. Uh, usually in November, we stop the warm up writing exercises and it's just work on your novel. Um, that's going to be a little trickier in our format. Um, simply because you're not actually going to be here. So it might just be a scheduled time of, oh, hey, it's whatever period you have this. I should know that, but don't. Um, um, you know, from 8 to 8.50, just going to write and work on my own. Uh, but we'll, we'll figure this out as we go. Um, and our vocabulary. We, we do need some vocabulary terms regarding like sentence, or not sentence structure, uh, regarding story structure, regard, regarding, you know, different types, different genres. Um, I think given the limitations of distance learning, and it's, it's basically impossibly easy to cheat on vocab. 
So I'm going to come up with some alternate ways to do that to make sure you understand story structure and plot. Uh, be aware that that's going to ruin a lot of stories for you um, in a fun way. Uh, but my wife, for instance, doesn't really let me watch mystery shows with her anymore uh, because I'll do things like, oh, that character had lines, but they didn't really advance the plot, so they must have just been introduced because later on we're going to learn out learn that they're the killer. Um, and she got extremely frustrated with me, so now I, you know, play video games with her. Um, but we'll be working on that. Um, again, grammar, editing skills, these are all things that you're, you're going to need for this class. Uh, the editing skills, don't stress too much about. It's basically just a, hey, could I have used a better phrase here? Would this, you know, did I rush through this scene and it, would it be better if I spread it out? What kind of point of view? How do we want to move this around? You know, if we're doing a romance, do we want to do it just from one character's point of view or do we want to bounce back and forth and see both of them? We'll be doing a lot of that. Um, or presentations. I do still want to do some presentations. I have not figured out exactly how. Um, might be something where we could do as part of a Zoom class where you share your screen and show us PowerPoint or whatever you've made while, while talking us through it. Might be an option to record yourself like I'm doing now. Really have not figured this out. As you may have noticed, I'm trying multiple methods myself to sort of see what works, what doesn't, what you guys like and what I like. The idea is that we will still do this. I just need to figure out exactly how. Uh, the readings, mostly gonna be things um, on Writing by Stephen King. Uh, the first half is kind of autobiography. Hey, here's what it was like being a writer. Um, which is interesting, but not necessarily helpful for your writing. However, the second half of this book is fantastic, and it's Stephen King's writing advice. Um, we're also going to look at Writing with Power by Peter Elbow, uh, which again is just, hey, here's some like methodologies and like philosophies behind writing and different ways to approach writing. Last I saw, uh, there was only one section of creative writing and we have one class set of each of those books. So it should be possible at some point for us to do like a drop off, pick up thing at the loop. Um, I also need to do some digging to find out if I can find digital copies of these to uh, just sort of make that element easier. Um, we're going to do a little bit of literary criticism, just sort of as a, hey, this is things, these are things that go on that people look for in short literary works. Uh, if you want to make use of it, you can, and if you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, but it is, I think, worthwhile for every author to know how critics are analyzing their work. Um, we're going to read a bunch of poetry as well, in addition to writing it, just to sort of get ideas of, you know, how have other people done it before. Should be useful, should be interesting, and these are generally going to be sort of little breaks between you writing. Again, this class is mostly going to be you writing. Uh, last year I gave a few creative writing assignments to really all of my classes, um, and there were, as to be expected, a lot of short stories and poems about the times we're living in right now and the sort of the struggles and the challenges and what's going on in people's lives. I frankly kind of expect that that is gonna be a lot of what we see this year. There definitely might be some, hey, I don't wanna think about that, so instead I'm gonna write, um, you know, a love story set on a cruise ship or whatever. Um, that's also fine, but if you took this class with the thought of, hey, I'm a little stressed and writing about all this stuff will sort of help me decompress, this could be a very nice fit for you this year. Uh, we will read a few short stories. 
but generally nothing more than about 10 pages. Um, again, we're mostly going to be looking at these, almost analyzing them for how did the author, like what was their purpose, how did they get themselves to that purpose, what kind of points are they trying to make, where are they using mystery in these. Um, so we'll definitely be talking about that. Some of these are semi-autobiographical. Um, Face the Flying Sewage and uh, La Promesa are sort of both based on, um, or similar to, uh, real life experiences, or at least inspired by in La Promesa. Um, so there's definitely, whereas My Life with the Wave is uh, sort of surrealist, magical realism,